welcome to trinod chemistry classes in this video i am going to discuss about intermediate second year chemistry topic that is electrochemistry this is one of the important topic as far as ipe point of view and in any objective kind of exams in this video i am going to discuss about electrochemistry this is my second video in electrochemistry topic in my first video i have discussed about what is electrochemistry what are the substances are classified into two types one is conductors and insulators and in conductors again classified into metallic or electronic conductors then electrolytic conductors i have discussed about what are the differences between metallic and electrolytic conductors then i have discussed about what is electrolytic cell electrolytic cell is a device which converts electrical energy into chemical energy electrical energy into chemical energy and uh, we have seen um, working construction and working principle of uh, electrolytic cell then i have discussed about what is electrolysis then faraday's laws of electrolysis were discussed in my first video in this video i am going to discuss about uh, some important problems in on faraday's first law and the second law then i am going to discuss about what are the products formed at cathode and anode during electrolysis let me discuss one more time again what is electrolysis electrolysis means decomposition of a substance by passing electricity through its aqueous solution or molten state is called electrolysis decomposition of a substance by passing electricity through its aqueous solution or molten state is called electrolysis i have already showed uh, discussed aqueous solution means when it is dissolved in water that the when a substance is dissolved in water that substance is called aqueous solution and molten state means if any solid is heated at its melting point it's converted into liquid that liquid state of a substance is called molten state molten state the quantitative relationship between the amount of electricity passed and the amount of reaction occurred that is given by faraday's laws of electrolysis faraday's laws of electrolysis faraday's laws of electrolysis gives the quantitative relationship between the amount of substance deposited or liberated and the quantity of electricity passed through a substance passed through a substance what is faraday's first law of electrolysis faraday's first law of, according to this faraday's first law of electrolysis the amount of substance deposited or liberated at an electrode is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passed through it quantity of electricity passed through it the amount of substance deposited or liberated at an electrode is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passed through it arithmetically it is expressed as m is proportional to q or w is proportional to q where m or w corresponds to the, the mass of the substance deposited mass of the substance deposited substance deposited and q is the quantity of electricity passed through it quantity of electricity passed through it passed through it quantity of electricity passed through it you see here we know that quantity of electricity amount of electricity q is given by i into t where i is the current in amperes i is the current in amperes then t is the time in seconds time in seconds time in seconds then if i substitute q by place if q is equal to it in the above equation w or m is proportional to it then m is equal to if i replace if i remove the proportionality then i can have to write some constant i am writing this z then m is equal to z it 
here z is called the electrochemical equivalent z is called the electrochemical equivalent z is called the electrochemical equivalent and its value depends upon the nature of the material nature of the metal or nature of the substance nature of the substance here m is equal to z i t this is the faraday's first law of electrolysis equation here z value is given by z value is given by m is equal to e by f into i into t where f is called faraday f is called faraday and is equal to the and is equal to the 9680 96487 coulomb on faraday is the charge of avogadro number of electrons avogadro number of electrons avogadro number of electrons we know that charge of electron is what is the charge of electron charge of electron is electron is equal to 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs and uh, we know that avogadro number avogadro number is 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23 then charge of one faraday is equal to charge of avogadro number of electrons avogadro number of electrons and if i multiply 1.602 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs into or uh, 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23, I will get 96,487 coulomb. While doing problems, we used to take 96,500 coulomb per mole. Coulomb per mole. So this is regarding Faraday. What is Faraday? Faraday is the charge of Avogadro number of electrons is called Faraday and it's equal to the 96,487 Coulomb per mole. Coulomb per mole. Now, according to this Faraday's law of first law of electrolysis, Faraday's first law of electrolysis, M is equal to Z I T, where Z is equal to given by E by F into I into T and uh, E is the equivalent weight of the metal. Equivalent weight of the metal. Weight of the metal. And F is the Faraday. F is the Faraday and is equal to 96,487 Coulomb per mole. And uh, please remember, I should be taken current in amperes only. Current should be taken in amperes only. And time should be taken in seconds only. Time in seconds. Time in seconds. You see, while or solving problems that I should be taken in amperes, T should be taken in seconds and E is the equivalent weight of the matter. For uh, intermediate point of view, we need to remember the uh, equivalent weights or atomic weights of the certain metals. For example, if you take copper, its atomic weight is 63.5. Atomic weight is 63.5. Then if you take silver, it is 108. Atomic weight is how much? 108. The silver atomic weight is 108. Now, let me discuss how problems will be asked in any objective kind of exam or in intermediate point of view. Now, problem will be asked like this. Calculate the amount of copper deposited when 2.5 amperes of current passed through an aqueous solution of copper sulfate for one hour. For one hour. Now, according to this Faraday's first law, what we know, M W is equal to Z I T, Z into I into T, and uh, I is given that 2.5 amperes, 2.5 amperes, and uh, T is given as one hour. We know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes, and uh, this is corresponds to 60 into 60. This is equal to 3,600 seconds, and uh, F is given by 96,500 coulomb per mole, coulomb per mole, then E is given by, uh, this is equal to the uh, 63.5 by 2. This is a response to some roughly 31.6, 31.7.
31.7 because we know that here copper is converting into copper sulfate to copper that is from plus 2 to 0 that's why its atomic weight is given with the uh, equivalent weight is given by the equivalent weight of copper is equal to atomic weight of copper by 2 atomic weight of copper by 2 that's why that's why we should take in as the equivalent weight is equal to 63.5 by 2 because here the reason is here copper is changing its oxidation state from plus 2 to 0 plus 2 to 0 that's why equivalent weight of copper is given by its atomic weight by 2. Its atomic weight by 2. So now, if I substitute the, all the values, all the values in the above equation, what I will get? W is equal to 31.5 by 96,500 into 2.5 into amperes into then uh, what I am getting here, 3,600 3, seconds. So, finally, if I compute, how much I will get? So, answer I, may get, I will get 2.94 grams. 2.94 grams. Here, uh, the, you know, I is given and T is given. The time in uh, the seconds, we should take as a time in seconds. Then we need to calculate how much amount of copper is deposited. So this is an important uh, problem needed to be uh, learned for IPE, particularly IPE point of view and in any kind of objective point of exams. Here, uh, we can say one thing. There are four parameters. If you observe the Faraday's first law of electrolysis equation, what are the parameters present? W is equal to E by F into I into T. Here, in the previous problem, I and T are given. W is needed to ask her to calculate. Maybe the amount of substance deposited will be given. They may ask you to calculate either current of how much time needed to be sent, current of some X amperes, rather how many, otherwise how many amperes of current needed to be sent to deposit this many grams of substance like this. Problems will be asked. Problems will be asked. Now, let me discuss what are the products formed during electrolysis. During electrolysis. Here, if I suppose electrolytes, molten NaCl, by using platinum electrolytes, by using platinum electrolytes. I have already discussed electrolytic cell is a device, electrolytic cell is a device which converts electrical energy into chemical energy, electrical energy into Electrical energy into chemical energy. We know that in any electrolytic cell, there are two metal rods are dipped and the electrolyte is taken its aqueous solution or molten state and one is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, another is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. The one which is connected to the positive terminal is called um, anode. Then one which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery is called cathode. You see, cations are attracted by the cathode and anions are attracted by the Anode. You see, here when molten NaCl is electrolyzed using copper or platinum electrodes, using platinum electrodes, what will happen is first NaCl gets ionized into Na plus and Cl minus. This is the first step is ionization will occur. Then at cathode, what will happen? Na plus takes one electron and it is deposited as a Na. Same thing if at anode, what happens is Cl minus converts to Cl2 gas. So now what are the products formed at cathode and anode? The product formed at cathode is sodium and the product formed at anode is chlorine. When molten NaCl is electrolyzed by using platinum electrodes, the product formed at cathode and anode are sodium and chlorine. Sodium and chlorine. So this is another important uh, point. Uh, they may ask what are the products formed? when molten NaCl is electrolyzed or some molten X electrolyzed solution is electrolyzed by using some platinum electrode or some other electrode. Now, let me discuss what are the products formed when aqueous NaCl is electrolyzed. When aqueous NaCl is electrolyzed by using by using platinum electrolytes. By using platinum electrodes. You see, when aqueous solution is electrolyzed, 
in aqueous solution in molten state only na plus and cl minus ions are there that's why they will be deposited at the cathode and anode respectively but in aqueous solution na plus and cl minus cl minus here there are two kinds of ions cations are positive ions or two ions are present na plus and na h plus and na plus and anions also two ions present oh minus and cl minus if it is in molten state, only Na plus and Cl minus are present. But if it is in aqueous solution, H plus and OH minus also present. When more than one type of ion are present, more than one type of ion are present, which one will be deposited at the cathode? Which one will be deposited at the anode? This is, uh, this is predicted by using preferential discharge potential theory. Preferential discharge theory. The ion which has a lower discharge potential, which has a lower discharge potential, deposits in preference to the second one, in preference to the second one. For cations, if you take the order is K plus, Na plus, Ca2 plus, Ca2 plus, Mg2 plus, and Al3 plus, H plus, H plus, then Cu2 plus, Ag plus like this for cations. This is the uh, discharge potential decreasing order. You see, out of this, the one which is the lowest discharge potential is Ag plus. Highest discharge potential is potassium. If you take anions, uh, the SO4 2 minus, NO3 minus, NO3 minus, OH minus, Cl minus, Br minus, I minus. You see, the one with lower discharge potential. Among the uh, cations is Az plus. Az plus. This is the decreasing order of discharge potential. If we compare sodium and magnesium, magnesium has a lower discharge potential. If we compare magnesium and hydrogen, hydrogen H plus has a lower discharge potential. If we observe among these cations, H plus and Na plus, which has lower discharge potential, H plus has a lower discharge potential. Among the anions, Cl minus has lower discharge potential. Cl minus has lower discharge potential. That's why who will be deposited at anode? Cl minus will be deposited and at cathode, CH plus will be deposited. H plus will be deposited. Now, if I write cathode, what happens? H plus will be deposited as a H. And H at anode, what happens? Cl minus will be deposited as a Cl2 plus electron. Cl2 plus electron. So like these questions will be asked. You see here, one interesting thing is, when aqueous NaCl is electrolyzed, what are the products formed at cathode and anode? Cathode is H2, anode is Cl2. When molten NaCl is electrolyzed, the products formed are Na at cathode and Cl2 at anode. See, this is important point in any kind of objective exams as well as an IP point of view. Thank you for watching Trinod Chemistry classes. Please subscribe my channel, share the video, like the video. Thank you.